All right, goodbye Quicksilver. Um, that guy was a nice dude. He, uh, he, I couldn't get the motor going, and um, but it's only just been recently serviced, so he, uh, he, he bought it anyway. I just knocked a little bit off the price, and it's not much to that engine, so he's going to take it home, and he's going to fix it, and they're going to head off this weekend. So hopefully, my new tender gets here soon. I'm uh, three minutes away. Um, got word basically this morning that I can come pick up my new tender. Yes. I'm gonna get there within eight minutes of them closing. What the hell is that? Stretch. Wind turbines. Holy moly, those blades are massive. Um, I've hired a trailer. It's coming in a crate. It's coming from New Zealand. It's coming from a company called OC Tenders. I put this order in in the middle of the year last year. And so, end of February, six, seven, eight months. It's loaded up. Now I'm just gonna get home. So I'm in the port of Brisbane and it's usually about an hour, it's about 50 minutes home, but to where I live on the boat on the canal in Gold Coast. Radio, unbox it. Good morning. Sorry, I've got a little bit of a cold, so I might sound a little bit weird. Thought I'd just finish off this uh, tender video. It is such a sweet tender. It did cost an arm and a leg, but the idea for me was to have something that was all fiberglass that I can continually fix if it ever needs it and hopefully basically last forever. That's the plan anyway. The only other option for me was aluminium and I don't really want to do aluminium because if it smashes up against the boat, it's quite hard and I can't weld aluminium to sort of fix it. This was the option for me and it's really cool. Let me give you a little walk around of, uh, I don't know what this tender should be called. Can you leave it in the comments? Maybe schmickle schmackle. Kate calls him Scout. Okay, I've just put these Navisave lights in. So this is the all around and I have the white one at the back here. These are awesome. They were relatively expensive, but I originally started to use the stupid little suction ones with the big batteries and the batteries would last like three times and then they, they would always fall off. They were absolutely useless. <laughs> one even broke like the first time and I took and I took it back and, and got another one, but yeah, don't buy those. They're absolutely house. I'm not sponsored by any of these products, by the way. These ones on the other hand are so, so good. They run on AAA batteries and they have all these different settings that you can set it to, sort of strobe and whatever that one is. Yeah, the final loan in Australia would cover the cost of these. So um, that was a no brainer and it's nice and fixed. I can take this one out of here. This one's just in a GoPro clip on its own. Really good addition. It's nice having those on when I do missions out to Stradbroke or it's usually if I'm going surfing early or if I have to go pick someone up in the evening if they don't get back before the sun goes down sort of thing. This little anchor here, when I got it and it's got like a meter and a bit of chain, I was just like, what a piece of shit. There's no way this tiny little crappy anchor is going to hold this boat, but it does 
and it also does it really well. Yeah, sometimes I've been pulling it straight up and you can still feel it's biting right into the sand. Doing lots of missions out the back of Stradbroke to go surfing and you just anchor out the back of the a break and there's been wind and there's been waves and it's always held and it's never gone anywhere. So that's really good. I did add I did add an extra bit of rope here. We've got a painter in here. It's quite a large sort of footwell. We put our groceries and stuff and anything that needs to stay dry in here. I also normally have a bucket in here. That will just be another spot that we can keep dry stuff. Offshore cruising tenders. The company in New Zealand that make these tenders. It took eight months to get to me after ordering it. But in that process, there was a lot of communication by them. And they even send you pictures of stages through the build and it's got your name on it and so yeah I don't know I think it's a family run business and it had like a real professional feel about it with still maintaining that sort of homely vibe you know so that's how they came across so that was really cool and if I start to move back yes yeah, so an FCS surfboard racks installed by offshore cruising tenders they're awesome an absolute necessity for me because first and foremost Frankie Knuckles is a surf exploration vehicle. If we come around the back here, I have these sort of beach wheels that were installed by the company as well. I got those, all these little things you can add on to sort of like your package. I was having an iron whether to add these wheels on and I am absolutely glad that I did because there is so many times that I've used them and I wasn't sure. I was just like, oh, will I use the wheels? and I've used them heaps. So yeah, they really come in handy. I have a Yamaha 9.9 .9 brand new engine on the back. Four stroke, the tiller extension comes from Ocean Cruising Tenders. This Yamaha 9.9 .9 is awesome. I love it. Is it enough power for this boat, which is three meters long? It's the three meter version. Absolutely with one yes with two but with two people to get up on the plane you usually need to depending on the conditions you need to sort of adjust your weight forward and back whoever's riding shotgun is usually being very dynamic with the way that the boat is reacting if we have lost the plane depending on how urgent it is they'll like lean right up the front here and we'll get back on the plane this engine has is obviously i got it from brand new and it basically still is brand new i lost this engine overboard in about nine meters of water the next video covers all of that that's all about me losing the engine so hit subscribe and the bell if you don't want to miss that one uh, just another thing with the yamaha 9.9 .9, the website states that they recommend an eight horsepower engine i honestly don't think that's enough for this boat I assume they recommend that based on the transom and how much load you could put on it with higher horsepower engines. This is all assumptions, I have no idea. But 9.9 .9 is really good for one or two people. It can't really get up onto the plane with three people. Just that little bit more power might make it better for when I've got three people in the tender. But also when you have three people in the tender, that is a lot of weight and do you really want to be going that fast? The more you sort of bashing it around, the quicker it's going to disintegrate. Hopefully by the end of this year, this whole thing will be going electric too. I'm still in the design side of this uh, that project, the design phase of that project. Hit the subscribe and the bell if you don't want to miss that one as well. That's going to be pretty exciting. I've installed this pad eye for security so I can lock everything down. I also have two other locks that I use to lock everything down. I'll show you that in a little bit. At the moment, as a safety, I've just got this going on here. I have a massive big bike lock that goes through the engine and also through this and at that can't actually open and that sort of locks it up so ever since i lost the engine overboard i've got this little safety on here at the same time that i bought my engine i brought this 24 liter uh fuel tank works good pull it into the water a bit it's also light it's like 60 kilos um quite easy obviously not with the engine at 60 kilos but it's quite easy to uh, to maneuver and to get up on the davits with one person. We got two of these little seats. 
the website says they can be used as a safety thing if someone goes overboard you throw it overboard i haven't used these very much every now and then i drive the tender from this sort of position but basically i'm only ever sitting down if it's dead flat if there's any sort of chop then i need to be standing up the other position that I ride in is I grab the painter like this and I'm standing about here and then I am holding on to the tiller extension here and I'm essentially riding this tender like a chariot. It does get a little bit skittish sometimes when you go on 20 knots but I can be quite dynamic with what's going on using my legs as shock absorbers. I can also lean into the turns a little bit which helps the tender. If I'm by myself I'm almost always just standing up even this morning on this basically dead calm day it's just so much easier for me to do everything and more comfortable yeah so i don't use these much they come out and go away real easy i've always got a sponge in here because there's always a little bit of water in here and i like to keep my feet dry I try and keep as much salt out of the inside of frankie knuckles as i can i normally have a little bag in here whenever i go and it has lots of spare bits for the engine it has handheld waterproof vhf it also has flares in it and a v-sheet all of those come with me almost every time just in case because i'd rather have it and not use it than need it and not have it this is one of the locks that locks up everything and we lock the tender up at night this is the other massive lock that i was telling you about that locks the engine to the tender and i also have a third lock that goes between the spindles that also stops people from operating the spindles when i'm not around there's these two bags underneath each side and they're quite big and they can hold quite a, a lot of stuff bailing buckets in here some silicon spray for the locks which need it almost every second day some more wax and some more sunscreen i keep the tiller extension in there and what as well and in this side i have the life jackets ah oh, here we go look i just found one of these pieces of shit. throw these out and there is also an ore under each side so they do come out really easy you do need to do the forward side first little latch and then the back side can just slide out these oars are awesome i've had to use them a lot already because i lost that bastard there's two rowing positions and obviously you just use one of these as your little seat and off you go and you row 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 they look like they also will last a very long time which is great and hopefully i don't have to use them ever again around the whole outside there is basically one big rub rail or fender whatever you want to call it and also underneath the tender there is an aluminium delta panel i think they call it it's another addition um and that just helps when you're coming in mac 10 to the beach like i did this morning uh there is also a carbon fiber version it's a lot more expensive i don't have the money for that and there is also a sailing version which i would be highly interested in it's a lot more money i don't have the money for that but i am just in the back of my mind toying with some ideas on how to make this sailing so that's it for this video thank you so much for making it this far you absolute legends like i said like and subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to see that engine turn into a submarine on one occasion and also in the not too distant future when i make this electric that means this will be entirely electric that is already electric and I will be 100% off-grid and electric. All right, catch you then. Okay, bye.